So what I'm going to be going through in this first one is just a little brief overview of alchemy and covering um, oscillators and voicing when you come to make your own sounds. So when you load up alchemy for the first time, you get all the presets shown and some of these are fantastic. You can go through by category and scroll through what you want. But what you really want to look at now is making your own sounds. So to do that, you have to go over to the advanced view. So this tab here, and that brings up the back end of the synth. Now, if you did have a preset, this is where you can tweak some of the settings to make it more to your likings. But to start from scratch, we're going to go to file and initialize preset. What that gives us is just a blank saw wave ready for us to start playing around with. So Alchemy has four oscillators. So oscillator A, B, C, and D. And you can turn these on or off just by clicking the letter next to it. And default is set to saw, but you can change that by clicking on the name. And then we can go to load VA, so virtual analog. And you have a choice of basic oscillator waves. So you've got your saw, sine, square, and triangle, much like you have on the ES2. You also have these complex waves, which are sort of digital waves. Now these can be used to create very different sounds to your standards, subtractive analog synthesis. And then we also have an expanded list of pulse waves with different shapes, saw waves, sine waves with octaves added or extra harmonics added. So you've got the root of the sine wave plus a octave in this case, or plus other intervals as you go down. Some alternate triangle waves at the bottom. And then finally, alternate square wave shapes. So there's loads to choose from. And you can navigate through this as well just by using the left and right arrows. To get into an expanded view of the oscillators, you can click on the A, B, C or D tab on the left. So if I go to A, you can see the view changes and I can see my sine wave here. If I scroll through some of the others, see it changes to square. So it's quite nice to see the sort of visual representation, especially with some of the digi waves really see what they're gonna, how they're gonna work like. So you can kind of tell that was sort of a sine wave, but with some noise modulation on it. Quite useful again, when you're looking at the alternate shapes for the saw, just so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. So a saw there, but with some interference on the sine wave. If I go back to my basic saw, to go back to the global view, this shows you all four oscillators, and we can turn a couple on. So I'm going to have A, B, and C enabled, and I'm going to leave them all as saw waves. What we can do now, we can tune them and pan them separately. So I can go up a number of semitones. So 12 semitones be an octave, 24 two octaves. And we can also pan them left and right. So maybe I want to have this one up 12, and let's take my second one, go up 24, and we can pan one to the right, and one to the left. So a nice spread of the sound. You can also go into the oscillator views here, and you also have the option of fine tuning. So course is in semitones, so each note, fine tuning, splits that note into a number of cents and you can get some detune effects here. Plus or minus 100 cents. Quite a common trick is to detune one by say anywhere between three and seven cents and then on the other one push it up the same amount. And again this gives you a nice thick kind of sound to work with. Going back to the global view, we also have this dial here, which shows you which of the filters the oscillator is sending to. So if it's in the left position, it's going to filter one, which is this top one. If it's in the right position, it's going to filter two, which should be the bottom one. You can have it go into a blend of the two, 
or you could have one oscillator going to filter one, another one going to filter two, or however you want to structure your sounds. So loads of customization on this. Even more on to filter one at the moment. That's what I'm going to be using. Back into the expander view, you have a few other options on here. Just cover a couple of these. This weight control is quite fun. What that does is it puts a delay on the oscillator. So you have the first oscillator going off straight away. The second one, you can delay it by, in this case, let's have it set to an eighth note. And you have the third oscillator delays by another eighth note. So in this case, quarter. So you get that on this arpeggiator sound. The final bit I want to cover on this is just moving over to the master and the voices. So master controls for your output volume and your overall pan, as well as your overall tuning. So you could pitch the whole thing up or down, as well as the overall detune, fine tune. So you want quite an analog sound, you can get add a little bit of detune to kind of thicken the sound up. And then onto the voices, we have number. So that would be how many notes at a time you can play in a chord. So I put it to two. Let's go turn my other oscillators off for a bit. So I'm gonna play a two note chord. This is to put the third note in, it will replace the bottom one. So I only have to play two notes at a time. If I change that to one, It'll be monophonic. If I put it up to a greater number, we can play four note chords, eight note chords, and so on. Without any overlap of the notes. You can change this on an oscillator by oscillator basis, but generally keeping it on all and just picking one for all of them is gonna be the most applications. You have a glide control, which adds a bit of glide in between each note. So it slides up. Get some nice effects with that and the weight control. And finally, pitch bend. So at the moment it's set to a tone or two semitones. If I put it to 12, it'd be an octave. If I slide my pitch wheel up and then you have down as well. If I pick link, it will mirror whatever the upset to. So now I've got an octave up and an octave down. So that's a really quick introduction to the oscillators and the voicing section. There's loads more you can go into to really kind of fine tune the sound, but we'll get onto that in later tutorials. We'll cover the filter and the envelopes next time.